Hey guys and welcome to Top Channel 101 and today we're going to be making a waterfall using geometry nodes and uh, this is what we're going to be doing is all procedural and I think it looks good how we have splashes we have uh, water falling and I even even add in these uh, water form yeah it's all procedural using curves so let's say I want another source around here all I have to do is let me first turn this off so that I can see the curves shift D duplicate it and I uh, just put it somewhere Resimulate, and uh, you can see I have a source there. So let's do this. If you want to check out the project file, links are going to be in the description. You can get it as a Patreon, a YouTube member, or on my Gumroad page. If you enjoy these types of uh, videos, make sure to check out my latest course about VFX in Blender that I did with Grand Abit. And uh, yeah, links are going to be in the description. So the first thing I'm going to do is set up some curves here. That's going to be our source of emission. So let's add Shift A, Curve, Basic Curve, and uh, let me just draw something simple. Yeah, just like that. Bring it up, go to Geometry Nodes, set up a new Geometry Nodes. And we're going to begin by just converting this to a mesh, distribute some points on that mesh, and uh, give them a velocity and gravity to fall down just like a waterfall. So to do that, let's first convert this to a mesh. So to curve to mesh, just like this, and then extrude. Uh, we want to extrude the edge, and we want to extrude down. So I'll use a combine x y to create a vector pointing down, or yeah, a z vector like that. So we have control over this, just like this. Now we want to distribute points on faces, just like that, and. Uh, if we play back, we want to add more points as time goes by. Uh, so for that, we're going to need a simulation zone. Now to add more points with time, we have to use a join geometry and join the original points just like that. Now, if we play back, nothing seems to happen. But if you look at our spreadsheet, you can see the points are increasing. Let's change the position of the new points by changing the seed uh, using the current frame. So I'll get that node. So you can see we're adding now more points. Let's give them some gravity using a set position. I'll just use a negative value and you can see now the points are falling down. We can give them some forward velocity as well by using another set position, this time uh, in the positive y direction. And you can see what we have. Now, the only issue with this is that if I take a look at my original curves, let me join this back to this. I will add a reroute node here and there. You can see that if, say, I make another copy of this curve, Shift D and rotate it, these points are just going to go in that direction, which is not something that I want. What I want is if these curves are facing this direction, uh, I want those particles to go th that direction. And to do that, we're going to use the normal direction of the emitter mesh. To set that up, since these are particles, they have lost that normal direction. So what we have to do is capture that before we convert these into particles. So uh, that's something we did around here. We can do that around here. So I can use a store named attribute and I want to store the normal. So I'll use N. It should be a vector and uh, the value should be normal. So I can bring that named attribute, which is N and use that as our new velocity. So if I play back, you can see that these are going in the direction that I expect them to. The problem is it's too fast, so I'll use a vector math to scale that down to something like 0.3. If I take a look at that, this is what we have. And I can use something like 0.1. We have that. Now, another thing I want to capture is the edge of the particle because it's going to be very, very useful, especially if we want to dampen down the velocity and add more effects. So let's store that by capturing the number of frames each particle has lived. So I'll use a store named attributes, call this edge. And what we're going to do is basically at frame zero, the edge is zero. So let's bring a named attribute, uh, call it again edge. And basically we're going to add edge to edge. Let's connect this to this and uh, use a math node. So every frame that passes, we are going to add one to the edge of each particle. Now, if we preview the edge here and uh, go to the points, you can see that the oldest particle is 18 frames and the newest particles have an edge of one. And uh, the last one is 18 because that's the current frame. So that's how the longest particle has lived. So 45, 55 are just like that. Now we can use this to dampen the gravity. So this is our velocity. 
I'm just first going to uh, copy this negative one uh, because I want to scale it uh, using a vector math. Scale this by our edge. Now, if we play back, you can see that is just going to speed up the particles uh, because we are multiplying them by the current frame. So we are multiplying large numbers. That's why the speed is very high. So I'm going to map the edge to a value of one. So uh, the oldest particle we want to have is maybe 100 frames. So we want to map that range to a value of one. And now you can see we get the effect we want. I'm going to delete this. So we have something like that. Uh, we can add a math node with operation of multiply in case we want to control uh, this, this value. So that's going to be that. Let's increase the particle count Let's and uh, increase the offset. Perfect. Okay, now let's work on some collisions. I'm going to go back to the original project and just grab a rock like this. Control C, Control V, turn on random colors. So let's have this as our collision object. It's quite dense. Uh, it has a lot of polygon count. Let's go in here. We want to do the collisions. So let's, uh, this was our gravity. 